12 principles of green chemistry in this video we are going to discuss this 12 principles of green chemistry on which green chemistry works the very first is prevention actually the prevention of waste you know in chemical reaction waste is produced and if that waste is produced we have to either treat that waste or clean up that waste so it is better to prevent that waste so this is given in the pre uh, prevention that means in the first principle of green chemistry so what will happen if waste is produced the yield of desired product will be reduced this is one thing secondly waste will affect the environment thirdly economically it is not beneficial so it is better to prevent waste so you have to design such kind of chemical synthesis where the waste will be minimized again so when this poor, when we discuss the first principle of green chemistry that is prevention of waste one factor is introduced that factor is a e factor e factor is a environmental factor and by using this environmental factor we measure the waste produced in the chemical reaction so the formula is e factor equal to mass of effluent means mass of the waste produced in the reaction upon the mass of the desired product to understand this e factor calculation i have taken here one example in this uh, reaction suppose 80.5 gram of this compound is taken it is treated with 74 gram of calcium hydroxide this compound it will produce 44 gram of our desired product and it will produce this waste cacl2 is waste it is 1 1 gram and h2o is not considered as a waste but this cacl2 is considered as a waste so we have to treat this waste or we have to clean up this waste now if you put this value this is effluent if you put this value in this formula it is 111 upon desired product 44 gram so this is 2.52 which is very high so if e factor is very high it is dangerous to environment and this reaction cannot be considered as a green 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 synthesis green reaction so it is our first principle that is prevention of waste as per the second principle of green chemistry it is atom economy this says that we should develop synthetic method like such which will maximize incorporation of all material we are using in the process into the final product if it is happening automatically we are going to decrease the waste and to decide the incorporation of all material into the product one term is introduced that is atom economy as per this term we have to take molecular weight of desired product here and the molecular weight of products means including desired product and the waste we have to put here after calculating this we will get percentage atom economy that should be high as uh, high as, uh, as 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 it is possible to understand this concept i have taken here one example where the one butanol is converted to the one bromobutane by using this sodium bromide in presence of sulfuric acid so when we perform this reaction we get this and sodium hydrogen sulfate and water as a by product now in bracket molecular weight of one bromobutane molecular weight of sodium hydrogen sulfate and molecule molecular weight of water is given if you add them together that comes 275 if you put this value in this equation 137 is a desired molecular weight of desired product that i put here and molecular weight of products means all together that comes to 75 after calculating this this we get 50% atom economy that means only 50% of this material 
is converted into the product and 50% going into the waste. This is not good for the environment as per the green chemistry. So we must try to maximize incorporation of starting material into the desired product and not into the waste. So this will automatically reduce the waste and uh, but uh, not all most of the reaction in most of the reaction 100% atomic, atom economy is not possible but we must try to get maximum atom economy to minimize the waste. This is the meaning of second principle of green chemistry. Now moving toward the third principle that is the use of less hazardous chemical synthesis. Less hazardous chemical we must use. Whenever practicable, synthetic method should be designed to use and generate substances that possess little or no toxicity to human health and the environment. So we must try to avoid such substances which are toxic to the human or to the environment and we should not generate such substances which are toxic to the human or to the environment. We must try to minimize whenever it is possible we should not use such kind of substances or we should not produce such kind of substances that is included in this third principle. For example, if you want to do oxidation of aldehyde, you can use tertiary butyl hyd hydroperoxide instead of using chromium or magnesium magnes compounds, which are more dangerous to the environment, rather than the byproduct produced from this tertiary butyl hydroperoxide is tertiary butyl alcohol, which is safer than these compounds. So, whenever possible, you try to use this kind of compound which are not toxic to the human health or to the environment. That is the meaning of third principle. Now coming toward the fourth principle, designing of safer chemicals. Designing of safer chemicals. That means we must minimize toxicity while maintaining the function and efficacy. Or in another language we can say desired level of performance, it should not be hampered at the same times within permissible level of toxicity. So smaller toxicity but greater performance. That kind of designing is required. That is the uh, fourth principle of green chemistry. Now coming toward the fifth principle, safer solvent and auxiliaries. Whatever auxiliaries we are using, auxiliary means solvents or separating agent that we should avoid or we should make we should be, it should be made unnecessary whenever it is possible. Instead of that, you can try solid state synthesis or you can use green solvents like water or liquid carbon dioxide or supercritical carbon dioxide. So, uh, that is the meaning of uh, this fifth principle, use of, or uh, you can avoid the use of organic solvent which are um, carcinogenic. Now I am moving towards the sixth principle that is designing for energy efficiency. So we must recognize our energy requirement and also we, we must think over its environmental and economical impact. And we, sh we should minimize the use of energy because we are using that energy either from fossil fuels or petroleum products. And if you are using in excess, that is actually generating greenhouse gases. So, and secondly, we are using non-renewable energy source. So, this is again having impact on the environment. So, whenever possible, we must design our synthesis, which is uh, required or which which will, uh, will be conducted by, at the minimum energy requirement. So, we have to use, we have to conduct our chemical synthesis at ambient temperature and pressure that will minimize the requirement of the energy. 
another is another i mean the seventh principle is use of renewable feed stock feed stock means raw material whatever raw material you are using that should be re uh, renewable rather than depleting if you are using your feed stock from fossil fuel which is having limited stock which is not renewable but if you are using biomass or methane or carbon dioxide that is good so whenever you design your synthesis it should be having raw material which is renewable rather than non renewable again moving toward the eighth principle you 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 reduce the derivatization you reduce derivative derivatives means what for certain reaction we need to protect certain functional groups and if protection is there in the final step we have to deprotect we have to remove that protection that means we are actually increasing the steps if we are increasing steps we are actually using more reagents if you are using more reagent you are using more energy and you are generating more waste so that is not good for the environment so whenever possible you try to reduce unnecessary derivatization moving toward the ninth principle that is catalysis catalyst is always good because you can reuse that catalyst you can reduce the time or you can increase the speed of reaction here i have given here one uh, one example if you want to do this reduction of this ketone by using sodium borohydride you will get this secondary alcohol whose yield is just 81% and this much waste you are generating but if you perform same reaction by using hydrogen gas in presence of this catalyst you will get 100% yield and there is no waste so this kind of method you should try whenever it is possible so catalysis is important in green chemistry to avoid waste or to protect our environment now moving towards 10th principle of green chemistry so designing for degradation whatever chemical you are going to produce that should get degraded it should not remain in the environment for longer time so whenever its function is over whenever its work is over it should be degradable so this is the meaning of 10th principle so we have to design such chemicals which are uh which can be degraded after their functions after their work now moving toward the 11th principle that is real time analysis for pollution prevention we must develop our analytical techniques which will which will monitor and which will control prior to the formation of hazardous substances so we can avoid chemical accident so that kind of advancement is required in analytical chemistry so this is our 11th principle now moving toward the tell and final principle inherently safer chemical for accident prevention so we have to select certain chemicals or whatever chemicals we are selecting for the chemical synthesis it should have less potential for chemical accident so we can minimize such kind of accident so these are the all 12 principles we have discussed here in this video and we must follow all these 12 principle for the synthesis of organic compounds so to uh, so we can protect our mother earth and it is uh, it is necessary to follow the 12 principles of green chemistry thank you